You're watching Exit 1055 with your host, Richard Rose. Hey, good morning. I'm Richard Rose. Welcome to Exit 1055 Long Island. This is your TV 1055 show about all things Long Island. In just a few moments, our Long Islanders in for a rate shock when it comes to renewing their premiums on what is becoming a shrinking state health exchange menu. But we begin this morning with more help for first responders. They risked it all to pick up that toxic pile following the collapse of the Twin Towers now 16 years ago. Just last month on 9-11, September 11th, they joined the relatives of the nearly 3,000 people killed in the terror attack. The yearly somber tribute and memorial is a time to remember these brave New Yorkers who gave their lives trying to help those trapped in the towering infernos. And to my uncle, Louis Anthony Williams, I can't believe it's already been 16 years. But the one thing you taught me that I kept on going is to be kind to everyone, no matter who they are. And I take that with me everywhere I go. Today is, uh, I think it's a really important day for uh, not just for New Yorkers, for everybody in this country uh, to, to take some time and think about how that day really changed this world. But in these last 16 years, death has also stalked the thousands of first responders who dug into that giant toxic pile that grim day looking for survivors. Nearly 2,000 have already died, and many thousands more are badly sickened and in constant need of medical treatment. Now, joining us is someone who, who knows this very well. He's led the fight to pass the Zadroga Act that guaranteed medical coverage for first responders. He is John Field from the Feel Good Foundation. Welcome to the show, John. Thank you for having me back. Sorry that we have to have you every year, but, you know, we never forget. Sure. And you, you certainly know about this because you worked on that pile and you paid a price, right? Weren't you injured badly? Well, you know, before everybody got sick, I got hurt and I lost half of my left foot. Went 8,000 pounds of steel, crushed my left foot. Four tons of metal. Yes, sir. Yeah, when you look at that pile, even today, you wonder how anybody would dare even walk into it. Yeah. But you they know, did. But my injury pales in comparison. I'm so minute to those who are sick and dying or who have died. And um, ever since 9-11, 16 years later, everything's been a, a challenge and an obstacle and a hurdle for us. And we're, we're still fighting to get legislation passed on so many levels at the state and federal levels. Well, you recently scored a big success mm -hmm. with getting first responders the sick days they need no matter where they work, because that can be a burden for local government, but the state stepped in, right? Explain what happened. Well, there. Governor Cuomo now signed a bill on September 11th that will ensure that those who are still working since 9-11, and respect to them, who still want to work with their illnesses, that they're using up all of their sick days and their vacation days to go to their chemotherapy appointments. Now they'll be reimbursed for that. And so, that's huge. So you're talking about people who continue to work. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. These are alpha males. These are the best of the best of what this country offered 16 years ago. Guys like Tom Wilson, who was NYPD and now Suffolk County, who used 145 days last year for chemotherapy. And, of course, you know, the governments they work for, sometimes they work for, like, the police departments sure. on Long Island right now. It's not Suffolk County or even county government. And, you know, they have policies about how many sick days you can have. Sure. They can just bend them for you yeah. because you might be considered a hero in everybody's eyes. And that was the problem, right? Plus, they got uh, financial issues that sure. they can't always pay for these Absolutely. sick days. And now the state and the municipality, uh, the city will reimburse the municipalities. And these men will be able to take that sick time in those vacation days without, uh, uh, because of their heroic actions, be penalized. Because I don't think people realize they are constantly going for treatment at what the World Health... Uh, World Trade Center Health Program. Right, and they have a big operation. Uh, how many first responders, first of all, are now ill? There's over 80,000 people enrolled in the World Trade Center Health Program across the country, about 56,000 in the tri-state area. That's like a small city. Sure, you know, this is a generation-long uh, fight. Um, people continue to get sick 16 years later. There's over 7,000 people with a certified 9-11 related cancer. Somebody from every state, uh, two congressional districts weren't represented at Ground Zero. So 433 of them were represented during that 10-month cleanup. Virtually the whole nation was here. <clears throat> Basically. You had people from all over the country. So now maybe somebody goes back to Ohio or California. Sure. How do you even keep track of them? Well, now the federal government's doing a better job. You know, when we got the bill renewed two years ago, when we had 75 years of health care, everybody was jumping up and down saying, we have 75 years of free health care. First words out of my mouth, well, you had 75 years to get it right. And now we're working to ensure that this program's running right. What's not right about it? Because the government put billions aside for it. Sure. Is there enough money there? And what's not right about the program so well, far? It's a government-run agency. <laughs> uh, workman's comp, Social Security. Uh, people fall through cracks. You know, we have to, we have to show a little more uh, intimacy. We have to show a little more compassion. And um, we have to be more hands-on in approaching 16 years later. You know, the average age of the 9-11 responder was 39 years old on 9-11. They're now 55, 56 years old. What age? That hurts. 
now add these debilitating, life-threatening illnesses, and it's harder for these men to get and over the goes and on. women. And you go to Washington all the time to lobby sure. them because there's been a number of conditions that have been uncovered by uh, this World Trade Center organization, health organization, that has been checking the first responders. Sure. What have they learned from that? What caused these illnesses, and what kind of illnesses yeah. are we talking about that are not covered at this point? Well, autoimmune's not covered yet. Neuropathy's not covered yet. But we're confident in the future they do get covered. You know, when we got the bill passed the first time in 2010, cancer wasn't even on the bill. Now there's 70 cancers covered under the bill. This takes time, but science is gradually catching up to what we've been yelling for the last dozen years. Now, neuropathy, that's something that people who have back injuries often sure. know about. It can cause pain in yeah. your, your exterior limbs, especially yeah. your feet, your yeah. toes, sometimes your hands. And a lot of times people fell or they were picking up really heavy stuff there. Yeah. And we're finding this showing up in the yeah. first responders? So I don't know hundreds. I know thousands, thousands. that have neuropathy. And that can know. be very painful and debilitating. Sure. I don't know hundreds that had autoimmune diseases, I know thousands. And um, I'm confident that this will get added. And autoimmune diseases are generally rare. So for them uh, to be showing up in larger numbers here is kind of a telltale well, the sign. The thing with autoimmune now, uh, it's so broad. So many illnesses fall uh, under autoimmune. So the government's uh, uh, doing their uh, diligence and making sure that we choose the right ones. You know, you get people in Congress, they're like, hey, we got so many catastrophes yeah. we've got to spend money on. And, and there was resistance yeah. to this bill. And every time you went back for yeah. war or anything additional, you found that. Because somebody in another state be like, well, you know, it happened in New York. You know, uh, yeah. we're going to pay for this? How many billions does New York want for this? Do you still running into that? And is there anything legitimate about that? Because how do you know whether or not these illnesses were caused by working on the pile? The absorption through the nose, mouth, and skin. We ate there, we slept there, we worked there, we cried there, we went to the bathroom there. These toxins individually would have caused a, a, an illness. Now combine them all together, that's a toxic soup nobody ever went to school for. It was unprecedented. So for any elected official who doesn't have the medical background to spew something out of the hole under their nose, that's that's it, it doesn't it doesn't even phase me anymore. I've well, been so what, I've been so watered down by stupidity in D.C. Well, this is what they face when you come to town. I think we know that. So, what have we learned from this? I mean, it's conceivable, and maybe you'd never get mm -hmm. an attack like this again. But it's conceivable that you could have a, a large building yeah. collapse and have these same kind of conditions well, for first you know, responders. We're not only, has anything we're, been learned we're to not change only, how we we're deal We're not with only that? being treated and monitored and and paid uh, medications and operations. We're used as guinea pigs now because, God forbid, this, God forbid, there's another catastrophic event. They can now use the, sta the statistics from 9-11 to use against another environmental disaster. But you know what? At the end of the day, all of these horrible events, you know what brings us all together? The spirit of the American people. Look, Look what happened in Vegas. Look at how all these people came together. Look at all of these hurricanes. All the American people came together. It's the American people that make this country great, not our government. You know, I'm wondering, are we also seeing post-traumatic stress disorder at all sure. in any way showing up in the first place? Absolutely. I was diagnosed by four doctors with it. Um, and know. that's just from the trauma of seeing what you saw? Sure. Kind of like going to war? Well, you know, nobody's programmed to wake up and see that kind of devastation right. and destruction. Nobody wants to see burnt bodies to a piece of steel. Nobody wants to see a foot in a shoe with no body attached to it. Um, you're just not programmed for that kind of stuff. Well, it's still hard to think about. Even though 16 years have passed, it's like it happened yesterday yes, for those who remember it so well, like the first responders and those who lost loved ones. We're all with you. I can tell you that. John Field with the Feel Good Foundation. Thanks for your efforts. You'll not be forgotten. Thank you, sir. Well, up next, is it a dangerous street? What's causing and what do residents want done about it? Stay with us.